But it's a faith walk. It's a faith walk and it's a faith life. And so living by the word and living by faith is rare. Because Jesus told us, and let's just go right into that and, and look at Matthew 7. Let's just go to heard that. Stand, I heard the Holy Spirit go, go, go right there. It's Matthew 7. Whew. Hallelujah. Matthew 7. And uh, we'll read this first, and then we're going to go right on over uh, to, to Romans. But we have to understand that the life of the believer is a, is a life of faith. It's a faith life now. And everything involved in your life as a believer, as a child of God, is faith. And so you have to learn faith. It's not automatic. We don't live by appearance. We don't live by circumstances. We don't live by situations. We don't live by feeling anymore. That's the life we had in the world. And so everything you see in the natural is subject to change. I want you to adopt that today. We're going to declare that. And anytime you see anything that's happening, going on in your life, that's contrary to what the word says, you declare this is subject to change. Oh, shout hallelujah, somebody. Come on, shout, this situation is subject to change. So the word of God is the final authority. I believe the word above the circumstance. I believe the word of God above what I see. I believe the word of God above what I feel. And so you have to grow out of feeling. You have to grow out of living by appearance. You have to grow out of being moved by situations and conditions. And in the world, Jesus said, you're going to have tribulation, trouble trouble. He said, in the world, you're going to have tribulation, but he said, be of good cheer. And so the world will try to scratch their head, try to figure, how can I have, have good cheer when all of this is going on? How can I be of good cheer when, when I'm dealing with this and that, you know? Come on, shout, by faith, by faith in Jesus, all right? And so we, by faith, believe the word above what it looks like. We believe the word above what we feel. We believe the word above what people say. Hallelujah. And so that's what we live by and that's what we have to stand on and be committed to. So I got to be committed to it. And that's where it's got to start. There's got to be a commitment to the word, a commitment to the word, a commitment to God that not pursuing the word is not an option, not seeking his face. That's not even on the table. Not even a category. Anymore. And then you got to understand that the enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion, the Bible says, walks about seeking whom he may devour. And so that's another main reason why you need your guard up. You need the word of God overflowing in your heart and in your mind. Because the enemy is after you to destroy everything about you, everything that you are and everything that you have. Jesus said the thief cometh not but for to what? Steal, kill, and to what? Destroy. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And so you've got to understand that. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly hallelujah and so the enemy is working 24 7 to deceive to destroy to steal to kill to destroy to steal to kill to destroy you have to be working 24 7 to live in that life that kingdom life that jesus has already provided through the blood come on now through his blood that was shed on the cross of calvary Hallelujah, somebody. Come on, say hello. Come on, say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So I'm victorious. I'm an overcomer. I'm blessed of the Lord. I am what God, come on, say it with me. I am what God says I am. Come on, shout, I can do what God says I can do. And so we walk by faith. Living by faith is rare. Let's start with this, and then we're going to get back into that. Matthew 7 and 13. Come on, read. Enter ye in at the what? Straight gate. For what? Wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And he says, many there be which go in thereat. Many are going in that way. Many are in that way. He says, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many are in that way of destruction. 
verse 14, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. It's compressed. It's not easy. It's difficult. He says narrow is the way because it's difficult. It is difficult. Hallelujah. Amen. Shout is difficult. <laughs> All right. Now, he said, because straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few. But what did he say? Few. How many? Few. There be that what? Find it. So it's rare. It's rare. Mm. It's not the popular route. I want you to get that this morning. <laughs> it's not the majority focus. All right. He says, so he said, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few, come on, few there be that one, find it, discover it, embrace it, and heed to it. Mm. Hallelujah. And so the Bible talks about those who love their life in this world more than the love of God. All right? And so it's a yielding, it's a submission, it's a commitment to the heart of God. So every day it's not going to look favorable for you. Hello, somebody. There are going to be some unfavorable situations. There's going to be some difficulties. There's going to be some situations that's just going to look like you are maxed out to your limits. That's why you have faith. Oh, hello, so much. You're not going to need faith when you get to heaven. <laughs> He's giving you faith to live by right now while you're here to believe him and everything that he has already provided for you and every promise that he's already given to you. Hallelujah. You don't have to sit back just a wishing and a hoping and a praying that someday, somehow, things are going to change. God wants you to pray declaring what you already have and who you are in him. And so that's your, com your heart, your thoughts coming out of agreement and alignment with the world so that your confession comes in divine alignment with his kingdom and his way of doing things. And that's not easy. Because you've got to think about folks who live all their lives, living in the world, living a certain way, uh, thinking a certain way, and then now you embrace the truth, you hear the word of God, you're taught the kingdom life, and now there's a major adjustment that has to take place. If I'm going to come in divine alignment with pleasing God and change everything that has been happening and going on in my life, then that change has got to begin in me. I have to submit and embrace the word. And now, watch this. I understand that God said he is watching over his word to perform it. Hallelujah, somebody. And so we're talking about kingdom advancement and living by the word. Come on, start living by the word. And so I'm living by the word is living by faith. All right. And so let's go to Romans 1. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans 1, verse 16. And the Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And therein is the righteousness of God revealed. All right? This is where we want to get to, verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God, what? Revealed from what? Faith. Come on, to what? To faith. So from one faith level. So in the word of God, come on, shout in the gospel, in the word of God. The, word, the, the righteousness of God is revealed to me from faith to faith, from one faith level to another faith level. So that's growth. That's growth. My, my, how I was last year, 
to, to the point of where I am this year, there should be some growth. There should be a greater assurance, a greater dependency on God than what I had. But the key is, right, is that. Got to put the work in. You see. There's got to be, if I'm going to put the work in, and I keep coming back to the, the Holy Spirit bringing me back to that word, commitment to him. <laughs> what does commitment look like? Commitment uh, is a dedication. It's dedication. It means that you are there. You're present. You're there. You're getting it. Wow. That's what Paul informed Timothy. Study to show yourself approved. Study the word of God. Study. You got to do it. It's not an option. It's not an option. It, study to show yourself approved in the sight of God. A who? Work men. I got to put the work in. A work men. This is my life now as a believer, as a child of God. This is taking on the Lord's burden and the Lord's yoke. He said, take his yoke upon us and learn of him. He said his yoke is what? Easy and his burdens are what? Light. Well, this is his. This is his yoke committed to him. His burdens are light, which means that burden is putting him first and his kingdom work as the priority in your life to renew your mind and live in divine alignment according to his will. There's no in-betweens. Come on, say it with There's nothing called in-between. <laughs> it's either we are in the kingdom, living by faith, or we are in the kingdom of darkness, living by fear and trauma. So we know what darkness is. Darkness is the word koshek in the, in the Hebrew, and it means misery. It means sorrow. It means death. It means ignorance. And so if I'm living in darkness, though, that's the life. That's the life, sorrow. Hello, somebody. And that's just the surface of it. In each one of those which are umbrella, there's multiple other things, fear, depression, Distress, worry, strife. You see. Not living by that anymore. Why? Because we live by faith in the kingdom of God. We're citizens of the kingdom and we have access to everything that God has. Ephesians 1 and 3, you can write it down. He says that blessed be the Lord our God who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He didn't say, I'm going to give them to you. <laughs> oh, hello, somebody. He didn't say, I'm, I'm going to try and see fit if I can let them make their way to your life. No, no. He said that you are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. They're already there. They're already given to you right now. They're yours. But the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. In other words, <laughs> he's, watch this, he's no respecter of persons. He doesn't show partiality. He doesn't show favoritism. He's not going to force anything upon anybody. Mankind has a will. I wish I had time to show you about the old covenant, free will offering. Mankind has a will. And you got to understand that we have to willfully go after him. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. I have to willfully seek him. I have to willfully pursue the word and know that any other option outside of this word is not an option. It's this temporary fix. It's just a temporary repair. I don't need a repair. Hello, somebody. Anybody looking for repairs? <laughs> we, 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 we need a total, complete change and transformation. That's what he gave. Can we give God some praise in here this morning right now? Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. He gives a total and complete change, transformation. That means whatever was, whatever was, whatever, whatever, whatever was overcoming you, whatever was hindering you, whatever it was, 
You will see that no more. Hallelujah. So no more. That's why the Bible says who the son said free is free indeed. Guaranteed for sure. I will not be that way anymore. I will not think that way anymore. I will not be overcome anymore by those things. Because I'm living in Christ now, living by faith. I'm living by the word of God. And the word of God is the final authority. All right. And so now he said, <laughs> let, let, let's, let's get this again. He says here, verse 17, Romans 1, 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written. Here it is. As it is written, set in stone, established. Come on, read that the just shall live by faith. Let's shout it out again. Come on. He said, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Go to Romans 10. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 10. Ooh, praise his name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Verse 8. He says here, but what saith it? The word is near you, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Wow. Let's read that verse again, verse 8. He says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we pre preach. Verse 9, that if thou shalt what? Confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. That's up. There's got to be a confession. He's giving us right here. What we're reading is the pattern. Paul is explaining the pattern of working faith. All right? But park right there for a moment. Go, go to verse 17, same chapter, Romans 10 and 17. We'll come on, we're going to come right back right there. But look at verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let's meditate on it for a moment. So then, come on, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now I already read in Romans 1, verse 17, that those who are justified in the kingdom living in the kingdom must live by faith. So my life now, come on, my life is a life of faith now. Come on, say everything about my life is a life of faith. So I'm called to live by faith. So now, I understand if I'm called to live by faith, look at this, verse 17 again, he says, so then faith comes by hearing and Hearing by the word of God. So faith comes to me, how? By the word. By hearing the word. So I have to have a commitment to hearing the word. So that faith is engrafted within me. Hello, somebody. Amen. Write this down. I hear you, Lord. The measure of my hearing. Wow. See, this is how it works. The measure of my hearing of the word is determining the measure of faith abiding within me. Wow. Mm. Now, it goes a little deeper into that because a whole, everybody that hears doesn't get faith. Why is that? Jesus told us, he said, because their heart has what? Waxed gross. Their heart has waxed gross. They, they, their heart is closed. And because their heart is closed, they can't hear what the Spirit is saying. You can't receive the word of God. They hear, like what Jesus gave, he said, they hear, but they don't hear. Mm. So we don't want to be 
in that category. So we don't want to be <laughs> in that category. Hearing and hearing and hearing, but because there's no submission of the heart, we don't ever change. Because the heart is not open to him. And so because the heart is not open to him, yielded to him, we can't receive from him. That's why, that's why James says stuff like this, James 4 and 7. What did he say? He said, come on, first thing, sub, submit. Why did he say, why did he, why did he just come out of the gate saying, you know, resist the devil and he will flee from you? He took the time to declare before all of that, he said, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. First thing he said, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Wow. But the revelation of that is submit yourselves under the authority of the word and with the word you use to resist the enemy. Wow. Hello, somebody. Amen. Whew. Glory to God. All right, and so I got to have an ear to hear. I got to have an ear to hear. I got to have an open heart to receive, working on my faith, working on my faith, receiving and walking in the fullness of everything that God has for me through Jesus Christ. So we understand that he said, what did Jesus say? He said, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So there's no doubt about it. The kingdom is yours. Everything you need has already been given to you by Jesus shedding his blood. Oh, are you getting this this morning? Everything, come on, say it with me. Everything I need has been given to me through Christ shedding his blood. Wow. So we don't live by worrying and trying to figure it out how it's going to happen. Faith is the key to the kingdom exchange from what I need coming from the kingdom into my life here in the earth. Wow. Shout us by faith. Go, go to Hebrews 11. Oh, praise God. The number one attack of the enemy is to keep you out of the word. Why? To keep you with a mindset and a heart full of doubt and unbelief. Keep you not believing. Keep you not believing and it keeps you from receiving. We understand that in verse 6, Hebrews 11 and 6 says what? But without faith is what? Impossible to what? Please him. So outside of faith, I cannot please God. Hmm. Doesn't matter how much I cry. It doesn't matter how much I scream. It doesn't matter how much tired I am of situations and circumstances. If I'm outside of faith, outside of the word, I cannot please God. Wow. And it says here, he says, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a what? Rewarder of them that what? Diligently seek him. You need to underline that word, diligent. Because this, this is where it becomes a deal breaker for many, that word diligent. This is where the work comes in, because that's what that word means. To be diligent means to work, labor. Now, one of the Greek words is plowshare. I've heard that before, plowshare. What's a plowshare? It's what they used back in the old days to plow the ground. Mm. To plow the ground to get all of the weeds out of the way to prepare for planting. Whew. Hello, somebody. And so diligent means to work the plowshare, to get all of the weeds out of the way so that there can be planting of seeds and the weeds would not be there to hinder the what? The crops from coming up. Amen, somebody. So when he says, <laughs> he is a rewarder of them that, watch this, diligently seek him, those who are working their plowshare by removing away all of the things that offend and hinder the faith life. 
What is that? Flesh. Carnality. Oh, my God. Hello, somebody. Come on, shout flesh. Shout carnality. Oh, worship you, Father. Bless you, Lord. So we got to go back. Come on, so we got to go back to the foundation. I heard the Holy Spirit. So we got to go back to the foundation. Folks are overcome. Hear me. People are overcome, distracted, quitting, giving up. Walking away from church. Abandoning God. Blaming God for everything that they see happening going on in their life. Now, now, who's the real accuser of the brother? Come on. The devil is. Amen. So we're not talking about physical fleshly works. We're talking about an experience, a relationship with Christ, walking in the spirit. Whew. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. He came that I might have life and that I might have it more more abundant, over and above and beyond what's been. That's the kingdom life. Not the life that was in the flesh of fear, trauma, doubt, and unbelief. I don't have that anymore. So there's got to be a seeking. Isaiah 55 and 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Draw nigh to him while he is near. There's got to be a pursuit. Amen. Amen, somebody. Shout hallelujah. Shout I got to seek him. All right. Now, I got to work my plowshare, which is removing away every bit of carnality and flesh out of the way of my life of flesh, my life of faith in the spirit. Now, how do I deal with the flesh? Word of God and prayer. Prayer is the key to the flesh dying. The word is the key to the flesh being suppressed or disciplined, brought under subjection to my spirit man. Mm. Hallelujah. First thing Jesus did when he uh, was raising the disciples up, he took them into the mountaintop. And he gave them what we call the Beatitudes. He began to structure them and bring them order and discipline according to the kingdom standard. God's way of doing things. Wow. And God said, my people got to go back. So there's a need to go back to, to the elementary things. Wow. Oh, my God. Wow. Uh, hold your place there, but go to, go to uh, Hebrews 5. The Bible says, get wisdom with all thy getting. Get an understanding. I got to understand what I need to do that's going to cause me to rise above where I've been to the fullness of the place that God called for me to be. So I'm going from what? Faith to what? Faith. We're going from glory to glory. It's ever increasing with God. No one who's walking with him stays the same. No one who's walking with God and living in the kingdom's circumstance doesn't stay the same. No one who's in a relationship with Christ and walking and living by the word of God, living by faith, is going to experience the same things. Paul told Timothy, he said, if you do these things that I'm showing you to do, this is what he told him. He said, if you follow these things that I'm teaching you to do, Timothy, he said, watch this. He said, you're going to be a good minister. He said, and let your profiting appear to everybody. There's going to be an advancement. There's going to be increase in you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I hear you. Whew. Can we give him praise right now? <laughs> Woo! But you got to want it. You, you got to want it. You, listen, you got to want it. it you you got to desire. There's got to be a desire. That's why he said, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. You got to want it. Amen. Wow. He said, I've, he said, 
But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He's already provided. How? According to his riches and glory. Wow. Amen. It's through the word of God living by faith. Try to spout the word of God living by faith. Ah, he, Holy Ghost. He said, the hearts of many uh, will wax cold because of the entertainment of the things that they entertain regularly that is in opposition to the life of the word and faith. Oh, my God. Whew. Whew. Oh, my God. It's the things that we embrace more than we embrace of him. Ooh. Shout distractions. Come on, shout distractions. See, this is worth your attention. This is worth your focus because it's your life. And see, folks, uh, right now, see, religion is the thief of power. Religion is the thief of your life. That's what religion is. Religion is emotional, uh, it, it's, it's emotional stimulation to make you feel like you're doing something, something's happening, and really nothing's happening because the heart's not changing. Wow. Mm. Come on now. Sat in churches, you know, and I pulled up on the parking lot, getting ready to go into a service, and I just felt in my spirit, something is not right. But I went in, and I already had in mind I'm not sitting under listening to foolishness. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Praise God. I need some substance. Why? I'm working on my faith. I came through too much. I came out of too much. Oh, come on, somebody. He brought me out of trauma. He brought me out of mess. Oh, my God. When my life could have been gone, should have been gone. But he, come on now. And I'm working on something. Every day, I'm working on something. Working on being better. Working on growing to the next level. Working on arising more and more in the power and strength of God. Every day, working more and more on my faith. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it. Come on. More. I've come that you might have life and have it more. But the love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul. That's priority. If there's no love for God, guess what? You're not going to be with him. You're not going to spend time with him. It's not lip service. Oh, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, no, no. No, it's, it's about your heart service unto him now. What did Jesus say? He said, man, he said, these people, he said, they, they honor me with their lips. He said, but their heart is far from me. He said to the goats on the left, he said to them what? He said, depart from me. I said, I don't know you. He said, Lord, we prophesied in your name. Lord, we ministered in your name. We cast out devils in your name. We did great and mighty works in your name. He said, depart from me. I don't know you. I was never intimately, relationally connected and acquainted with you while you lived. Wow. Oh, my God. You see. Oh, my God. He said, I don't. This, oh, my God. Write this down. <laughs> Whew. I heard this. I don't see the reflection of the Father in you. That's heavy. Because, see, the Father <laughs> didn't know you till you got born again. You got born again. You're in the kingdom of God now. Washed by the blood of the lamb. Living in Christ. Christ living in you. When he sees you. He sees Christ. It's like in Exodus 12. 
when they took the lamb of the household, what did they do? Come on, they shut themselves up and they took, they, they would follow the instructions and they lived because they followed the instructions. They took the blood of the lamb and what did they do? Come on, put them on the doorposts of their house. And God says, when I see the blood, come on, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. We're washed by the blood of Jesus. And when he looks at us, whoo, he sees his son. Come on, somebody. Wow. That's how it was in the old covenant when Adam was made. This goes way back when Adam was made in the split image of God. When God looked at Adam, he didn't just see Adam. He saw himself. He was covered and clothed with the glory of God. Oh, my God, come on. Whew. It didn't stop there. It goes way back to Lucifer. He was covered with the stones, precious, valuable stones was Lucifer's clothing that was embedded in God's throne. That when God looked at Lucifer, God saw the reflection of himself. That's what he's looking for. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. That's why there's, there's, no, there's no counterfeit for this. That's why he, Jesus was so hard on the Pharisees and on the Sadducees. Look what he called them. He, he, he said to the Pharisees, he said, you are, he says, you are, why did, uh, he said, sepulchers. He said, tombs. He said, you're all beautiful all on the outside, he told them. He said, but inside you're full of dead men's bones. Wow. Oh, come on. The church has to awake and arise to understand <laughs> that there's only one way to do this, and that's through Jesus, and that's through seeking his heart. God said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. He said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. We started out with God, and we're going to end up with God. There's no escaping from him. <laughs> Even those that's in hell right now are still in, confronting him right now. Those who had the opportunity all their life, all their life to live for him, to serve him. How many times have they, have they shunned being committed to him? How many times have they shunned the opportunity to, to know him, to study the word and live and fulfill his call and his purpose and plan for their lives? Because God has a specific plan and a purpose for each one of you. And he is holding all of us accountable to do it, to fulfill that purpose in that plan. That's why his word says, come on now, he laid his life down for us. We ought to lay our life down for the brother. Wow. That's the commitment. That's the call. That's the responsibility of the believer. This isn't for the lazy. This isn't for the slacker. Oh, come on, somebody. This is for those who will, ch Lord, whatever I need to change in me, change in me. What, what routine are we changing for the sake of the kingdom? Wow. There are people right now still are telling God, I don't have time. I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to study the word. No. There has to be a commitment that, listen, my job, my job is not more important than this. And praise God. Praise God where I'm, where I'm at. Praise God for the door he's opening. Praise God for, for, for everything that he's causing me to experience and do right now. But it's not, in more, it's not more important. You've got to ask yourself the question. 
if the job shut down, every resource shut down right now, is that the end of you? See, faith says no. Because the same God that started you out is the same God that'll cause you to rise up and finish your course. Wow. You will come into greater. You'll come into much more. Just ask Job. <laughs> Job had a commitment to God. Come on now. And come, he had a commitment to God. Job, oldest book in your Bible. The devil said, I want him. God said, go ahead. I know his heart. Mm. Wow. Did he say that about us? God said, I know his heart. Go ahead, devil. Touch him. Mess with him. I know his heart. I know Job's heart. <laughs> yeah, but you got a hedge of protection all around him. I can't do anything. Hey, go ahead. I'll move it. Job still yet declared, I'm going to be faithful to God. Circumstance changed for him. His children got destroyed. Come on, somebody. His children got destroyed. No, no. Dead. Lost his cattle. Everything, all his resources, gone. Sickness, boils all over his body. He was scraping them with a pot. And yet he said, naked I came into this world, naked would I leave out. His wife looked at him and said, oh my goodness, why don't you just quit? Give up. He said, you speak as a foolish woman. Wow. I know my redeemer living. Hallelujah. And though he slay me, yet shall I trust in him. Faith. Is that your commitment? Wow. Though I go through the storm, though I be mistreated, though people talk about me, though, though, though come on now, though folks walk away from me, though folks, folks just, just speak mad mouth and, and stab me in the back and go through this, though all of this stuff happens, yet will I. Is that your commitment? Yet will I trust him? Yet some doors close. Finances looking a little funny. You gonna still trust him? That's why this is a daily walk. This is a life now. Because what's determining your next situation is your condition. You can't wait till you get into something trying to get faith for that thing. Study the Gospels. Study the Gospels. You'll see Jesus. What did he do? He kept taking them through trials. He kept taking them through situations. He left them and he came walking on the water to them. Ah, it's a spirit. <laughs> they said, be not afraid. It's just me. This is what we do. We kingdom. <laughs> we live the supernatural life. We walk on the water. <laughs> Peter said, Lord, if it's you, let me come and walk on the water with you. Didn't he? Come on, didn't he? He said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Tell me to come, Lord. I just want to do it. Tell me to come. He said, come on, Peter. This is what we do. We have the kingdom life. We live in the supernatural. We do the supernatural. Are you getting this? We're not moved by the natural. We dominate the natural with the supernatural. You got to live in the supernatural by the power of God. Peter jumped out. Oh, I'm walking on the water, going to Jesus, walking on the water. Well, what happened? Come on, we know what happened. <laughs> Come on, what happened? He took his eyes off Jesus. He took his eyes off Jesus. He's, already, he's trying to show us something, y'all. He's trying to show us something. You take your eyes off of him, what happened? What happened to Peter? Come on, what happened to Peter? Come on, he, he started going down. <laughs> he started sinking. Then he said, Lord, save me. Wow, he was doing so good. He walked. The, the whole thing is Peter walked on the water. 
He was walking on the water till he took his eyes off of Jesus. And he started sinking. What's he trying to show us? Everything is going to be good while you're walking, stepping out on the word. Whew. Stepping out on the word. Hallelujah. But if you take your eyes off of the word, that's when things are going to go down. It's going to go south on you. You got to keep believing, keep believing, keep declaring, keep standing. But Jesus told him, he grabbed him, pulled him up, and they both walked back to the boat. But what did he say to him? He said, oh, you, watch this, oh, you, Jesus said, oh, you of little faith. See, there's levels of faith. What faith level are you on right now? God's called you to do big things. How's the business going to open? By faith. How's the money going to increase? By faith. How are you going to walk in and, and get that building in the land? By faith. How are we going to fill this place? By faith. How are we going to build the mall strip? By faith. How are we going to build the other buildings? By faith. It's not, oh, it just looked like it's not going to happen. Oh, it just looked like, mm, it's looking kind of iffy. No, there's no iffy. God says, I'm watching over my word to perform it. You can decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Wow. If you believe, he said all things. He said, if you just believe, he said all things, come on, shout with me, all things are possible to them that believe. Come on, say it again. All things are possible to him that believe. Wow. Oh, my God. He said, oh, you of little faith, where for did you doubt? What was he saying? What was he saying to him? You know what he was saying? Tell me. Tell me where is the place in your heart that you changed your mind? Where is it that you changed your mind? You was walking on the water, but you changed your mind about my ability. You question my ability, my power for you. Wow. Oh my God. Who are we to question God's ability, God's power, or what he's able to do? I hear you, Holy Ghost. Oh my God. He said, I'll leave you. Wow. What? Yeah. He said, I'll leave you. You just won't experience. That's what he did to his people. He said, they would, watch this. He said, he said, look here, move out of the way, Moses. He said, move out of the way, Moses. He said, watch this. Let's just watch him. He said, I'm going to watch Israel. He said, I'm going to watch and just see what the end is going to be and the outcome going to come up to. He, because they've chosen their way. Wow. He said, watch this. He said, they are a people in whom is no faith at all. Wow. And God says, all I can do, my hands are tied. I can't do anything. I can't do anything for them. I can't move on their behalf. I can't, I can't do anything. Wow. My hands are tied. Why? Because of anything outside of faith, I can't operate in. Oh, my God. Somebody say hallelujah. So we got to be in faith. Whew. In the name of Jesus. I keep hearing this. Go, go, go to uh, Numbers. <laughs> now, this is, this is sad, right? This is a sad story. You got 12 leaders, watch this, of the camp, of the tribe of Israel. All experience what God did in Egypt. All experience the glory cloud, the Red Sea divided, the Egyptians destroyed. They've seen the power of God. Watch this. Look, 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 let's, 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 let's just get to Numbers 13. Let's see. And he said, verse 17, Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, get you up 
this way southward, go up into the mountain, see the land, verse 18, what it is and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak or few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they, they, they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds or what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be of a good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they're going on out to spy out the land that God had promised them. Let me show you what a promise is. Promise is a guarantee considered already done. Say that with me. Promise is a guarantee considered it is already done. So there's no if God's going to do it. I like what he said to Israel. He didn't say, I'm bringing you into the land and if you come in to prosper. No, no. He says, when you. So you got to pay attention to the word. He says, when you become greater, when you increase. Wow. See, it's a guarantee. But if we don't understand the word, we don't know the word, what the word says, your circumstance, your situation is going to always outweigh your condition. What happened? Complaining. What did Israel do? Complain. What did they do? Complain. What did they do? Complain. What else did they do? Complain some more. What did they do? Complain some more. What happened? Moses got so fed up that when God gave him the stones of the Ten Commandments, he took them, threw them, and broke them. He said, God, I, I give up. I give up, Lord. I give up. And God said, look, you do what I told you to do, Moses. He said, because those that don't believe, look what he told him. They are going to die out of the land. God said, and I will raise their children. And I will use them. Somebody say, hallelujah. Come on, let's, let's, let's get this read. Ooh, he says here, verse 21. So they went up, searched the land, right? They went, searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob. And uh, as men come to Harmath, and they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahiman, Shishan, and Tamai, the children of Anak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Verse 23. And they came unto the brook of Esco, cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bare it between two upon a staff. And they brought, now that was, that was some grapes. That was some grapes. Took two of them to carry it. Are you seeing this? On a staff. <laughs> And he says, and they, unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back word, verse 26, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Showed them the fruit. This is what God was talking about, that he's bringing us into that land. This is the fruit of it. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's do it. Wow. Verse 27. And they, so you got to watch out for they. <laughs> Come on, so you got to watch out for they. <laughs> they told him and said, we came unto the land, whither thou sentest us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, right off the bat, focusing on the wrong thing. He said, I'm giving you the content of the land. Don't worry about the condition. Don't worry about the people. That's there. Don't worry about the other stuff. Wow. Let's read on. Watch this. He said, verse 28 again, Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, and the coast of Jordan, and Caleb, verse 30, watch this. Come on. Caleb said, shut up. Shut up. Be quiet. Wow. He said, stop talking. 
Because the words that you're speaking is birthing doubt and unbelief in the hearts of everybody. Wow. 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 He silenced everybody. He says, stop it. What you're saying is birthing fear in the hearts of the people. Wow. Oh, my God. Whew. Are you seeing this? Verse 30, come on. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. You see? You see the difference here? Faith or fear? Spirit or flesh? Are we seeing through the eyes of God? Or are we seeing through carnality? They said these people are stronger than we are. Are they stronger than God? Mm. Are they greater than God's ability? Because that's what faith is. Faith is living by God's ability now, not your ability. Wow. Oh, hello, somebody. Woo, are you getting this this morning? Hallelujah. Shout, I got to live by God's ability, not my ability. Your confession is always going to speak of who you're depending on. You or God? The devil or God? What I'm saying, what I'm declaring, what I confess, what's coming out of my mouth. Who am I trusting? Who am I leaning on? See, every day you're working on you. Every day you're working on your heart. Every day you're working on your faith. You're working on your confession. You're working on staying in alignment with God. And every day the enemy's trying to get you out of faith. Every day the, the enemy's trying to get you back in doubt, get you back in unbelief, get you back in confessing the wrong thing. God's able to do it. I don't know if God's able to do it. God's going, God's going to work it out. I don't know if God's going to work it out. God's going to turn it around. I don't know if God's going to turn it around. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Wow. Wow. That person will not receive anything from the Lord. Wow. Come on. He says, verse 32, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. There we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. They said we look like grasshoppers to them. Wow. And that's how they saw us. You see. And so anything outside of faith and our trust and dependency on God is going to keep you out of your promise. It's going to keep you out of your increase. There's stuff that God's waiting, I hear the Holy Ghost, waiting on you right now. Everything that you need has already been given and positioned ready for you. Wow. But it's by faith. It's by faith. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. Look at this. Look at chapter 14. Whew. Verse 21. Verse, he says, but as truly as I live, God said, all the earth shall be what? Filled with the glory of the Lord. God says he's going to get the glory. In other words, he's going to get it done. Watch this. Because, verse 22, because all those men which have seen my what? Glory and what? And my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have what? Tempted me now these 10 times. He said, and have not listened unto my voice. Surely, verse 23 says, surely they shall not see the land. He said, they're not going. 
which I swear, God said, I made an oath to give them. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. Verse 24, somebody read loud. Come on, verse 24, read. What does he say? He says, but who? But my servant, who? Caleb, because, come on, he had a, another spirit with him. Read on. And he followed, how, how long? How much? Full, how much? Fully. He said, he followed me fully. my God. Him. He said, him will I bring into the land wherein to he went and his seed shall possess it. Wow. His seed shall possess it. Somebody give God praise in here right now. Wow. He's no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of principles. And so those who work the principles, believe it, stand on it, apply it, abide in it, work it, they're going to come in and experience the fullness of the promises of God. Wow. But those who doubt, come on. Oh, my gosh. Those who doubt, come on, Mark 11. Enemy got you right where he wants you. He has people right where he, he, he wants them. Where in doubt. Unbelief. You believe God is going to provide. You believe God is going to heal. You believe God. So when you're working on something, you've got you to gotta zero in and focus on that thing. You believe in God for divine healing by faith. You don't have time. To be around folks that's talking doubt and unbelief. Come on. Me, Pastor Keisha was sharing with somebody uh, last week. We were sharing with somebody and, and you know, ministering to them. And they, and they kept going uh, what, what the issue was. What, what, this is what's happening. This is what they said. And this is what they And I said, don't focus on that. I said, don't focus on that. We can't focus on that. We got to focus on what the word says. Oh, come on, somebody. You see. But they're trying to say this now, and then now they're trying to say that. No, 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 no. Let's, let's forget that. Don't even speak of that anymore. But well, Pastor, why don't people get results? Why don't we pray for some folks and they don't get healed? Why, why do we, 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 you know, we pray and, and, and then nothing happens? Faith has to be involved. Oh, come on, somebody. It's like the men who brought, four men brought that man in his bed who had the palsy disease to where Jesus was preaching the gospel. Faith was involved. They walked around the whole house. There was no way to get in the house. So they were so determined that they were going to get in there. We climbing the roof. And they tore up the roof, opened up the roof, and let the man down in the middle of the roof to where Jesus was. What did Jesus say? Man, your sin's forgiven you, man. <laughs> you saved. <laughs> man, you saved. Right off the bat. You say, faith is involved here. They, they, they were so determined and so persistent. The man got up off that bed and got healed. Blind Bartimaeus, faith was involved. That's why we come and hear the word of God. Why? So we can get faith and believe God. He was hearing about Jesus. Blind Bartimaeus was hearing about Jesus. He was hearing about the miracles. He was hearing about the, the, the power of God. He was, he was hearing about 
opening blinded eyes, opening deaf ears. He was hearing about it. And then he heard, what's all this noise going on down the street? He asked somebody, this Jesus walking by, Jesus of Nazareth. And he was like, what? Jesus! Jesus! Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And he kept crying out. And he kept crying out. That was his faith operating. That was his faith operating. He was crying out, have mercy on me. They told him, shut up, quiet down, be quiet, don't say nothing. No, no, you're too loud. No, no, no. Jesus! And the louder he got. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, bring him. Not only that, his faith was such involved, he had a coat, which was considered as a, as a beggar's coat. And the Bible specifically said that when he went to go to Jesus, he left his coat behind and walked to Jesus. They brought him to Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. What was he doing? This is the last time I'm going to be this way. This is the last time I'm going to ever struggle this way. This is the last time I'm going to be blind. This is the last time I'm going to beg. This is the last time I'm going to be in this condition. His faith was involved. What is it that you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to receive my sight. And his eyes were open. And he began to see. Woman with the issue of blood. Come on. Faith. 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 Oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. Before we, whoo. James, I keep hearing James 2 and 5. James 2 and 5. James 2 and 5. James 2 and 5. We, we're going to finish with the, wish, the woman with the issue. Oh, my God. Said, I need results. James 2 and 5. Let's look at this. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? Wow. Oh, my God. And, come on, what's it say? Heirs of the kingdom which he have what? Promised to them that love him. Wow. Oh, my God. He's given to who? To the what? To the poor of this world to be what? Rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom. Do you know what an heir is? Do, do, do you know what an heir is? It means you have an inheritance. Now that's due you. And see, here's the, oh, he, here's the mindset God just said of many believers. Here's the mindset of many believers. I get my inheritance when I get to heaven. I'm waiting until I get to heaven to get what's mine. I'm waiting to get what's mine. Inheritance, watch this, comes. A natural physical inheritance comes when? Come on, help me. When what happens? Somebody dies, right? Somebody dies. That person's inheritance now legally goes according to a what? A will. According to a will, it legally goes to who? To that person in the will. All their possessions. Everything they own. Everything they have. Right? Okay? So we have a will God gave us. The Old Testament What's the word testament mean? Will. Old Testament means old will. New Testament means new will. Oh my God. So now, in order for us to receive everything that God has ordained for us to receive, somebody's got to die for us to get the inheritance. Who died? Case closed. What are we waiting on? <laughs> Case closed. Your inheritance is due. That's why you're called an heir of God and joint heir with Christ Jesus. Wow. 
Get what God has for you. Look at somebody asking, what are you waiting on? <laughs> ask, what are you waiting on? You see, don't grieve about it. Faith about it. Glory to God. Amen. Don't fear about it. Faith about it. Faith is the key to the exchange of what I believe coming into the physical. In the name of Jesus. I heard the Lord just now, uh, Sister Unique, God said that faith is the key in the door to your financial increase coming in. And I see thousands of dollars. I see twos. I'm not going to speak to everybody to, to, hear, to know what it is, but I'm, I'm going to tell you. But in the name of Jesus, thousands are coming. Thousands of dollars are coming. How? By faith. The plan that God has given by faith working that plan. Oh my God. Your financial struggle is over. Somebody praise him in here right now. And every time the doubt comes, faith your way on course. Stay on course. Stay on course. Stay on course. Stay on course. You see. See, oh, I hear, Lord. Oh, my God. It might not look like progress is being made. God said, but progress is made. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody worship him right now. Progress is being made. And every plan... And every door I've ordained open for you. It's already open. It's open. Can somebody help her praise the Lord this morning right now? It's by faith. The Lord says you will not walk another day feeling like the world is on your shoulders. I see this big weight in the spirit, just like this big, round, just heavy weight, just weighing no more, no more in the name of Jesus. By faith, you live by faith in the name of Jesus. And God's going to do it by faith in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to guide you, God says, and direct you on what way to go and what you need to do as far as your health. Know that I've healed you you declare that, you walk in that, knowing that my word is your health. <sighs> my word, God says, is your sustaining health. And the more my word coming in, the more healing, the more restoration. Doesn't matter what they said, what he said, what she said. God says, focus on what I say in my word. In the name of Jesus. Whew. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on. I mean, the woman with the issue of blood, it's by faith. She was already hearing about Jesus. See, oh, I feel the anointing in here right now. Whoo, somebody worship the Lord right now. Come on. Oh, there's the anointing. Glory to God. Whew. Just receive all of that. Receive it. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. I don't want you to look at your ability the next time you're dealing with something and going through. Come on. You look at God's ability. Is God weak? Come on now. Is God a failure? What? 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 <laughs> Come on. He, now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power. Watch this. According to the power. That's what we miss. According to the power that's working in us. It's got to work in us. Come on. Whew. Amen. Be not weary. I hear Holy Ghost. Be not weary in well-doing. Folks are getting weary. Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you're going to reap if you faint not. Don't faint. 
Don't lose heart. There's no quitting. In the name of Jesus. That woman said, if, she said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. Watch what she said. This is her faith in operation. Your faith has got to be in operation. That's like me believing for a car and I never go to the car dealership. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Every day, Lord, I believe you and declare my new car coming. Hallelujah. God's going to do it. <laughs> what does the Bible say? Faith without, yes, he said, I need to show it to you. He said, I need to go to James 2. Quick, 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 quick. So we're closing. James 2. Verse 20, verse 19, listen, we got to read 19 too, look at this. Thou believest, you have it son, hallelujah. Come on, verse 19, thou believest that there is what? One God, he said, you do well, right? He said, the who? The devils also believe in what? Tremble. Wow. They trembling. Come on now, every day demons trembling. Because of his existence. How, oh, I heard you, Holy Ghost. How do the devils know God more than we do? Come on, somebody. So, not so. They're trembling every day, terrified. Matter of fact, they know when their time of torment is coming. They're going to be cast into the lake of fire forever. They know. That's why Mark chapter 5. That's why, that's why, you know, Jesus, you Jesus, you're the son of God. I command you, I adjure you by God that you, that you torment us now. It's not the time yet. <laughs> you see, they know. You got to know who, who he is for yourself. Amen. Walk in your victory. Walk in your dominion. Walk in your authority. Where your house coming from? By faith. By faith. Say it with me. A delay is never a denial. What God has promised, that's going to be the last one I'll show you. I'm going to show you in Romans 4. Let's, let's get this. The, that woman with the issue, I mean, 12 long years, struggling. She was dealing with all what she was dealing with. She spent, the Bible says she spent what? All her money on physicians and on doctors. And what happened? Couldn't get better. Right? Couldn't get better. It was the end. This was it. But she heard about Jesus. She said, if I may but what? Touch. Did we read James 2 and 20? Verse 20, come on. Wilt thou know, O vain man, that what? Faith without works is what? Dead. Come on, say it again. Faith without works is dead. Come on, say it again. Faith without works is dead. There's got to be some working. It's called corresponding action. I got to do something. I'm doing this. Why? Because I believe God. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. She said, if I may touch the hem of his garment. Watch what she said. I shall be made whole. And she reached down, pressed her way through the crowd, and she grabbed a hold of the garment of Jesus. And immediately the Bible says, she felt when the issue of blood stenched, it stopped flowing. Jesus said, who touched me? Peter said, Lord, all these people all around you, pushing up against you. You said somebody touched you? That should speak volumes to you right now. Wow. Wow. See, I get this. Faith makes a demand on the anointing. Wow. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout my faith makes a demand on the anointing. 
She said, he said, who touched me? He said, man, all these people up against you. He said, no. Look what he says. I felt that virtue, the anointing, flow out of me. And he turned around and saw her. Look what he says. Woman, thy faith. He said, woman, thy, come on, thy faith have made thee whole. And if her faith made her whole, guess what? Your faith is going to do it for you too. Wow. Somebody praise God in here this morning. It's not sitting back just, just a wishing and a hoping. Work your faith. Work your faith. What are you willing to change in you and about you and about your life for the sake of Christ living in you? See, that's the kingdom life. That's the faith life. Am I willing to focus on a greater submission and a yielding to God? with my heart so that he can be glorified? Is it about him or is it about you? You see, he wants to be glorified through your life, but God wants to use you and your faith and your results and your outcome to reach others. Hallelujah. That's why Paul told Timothy, let your profiting appear to all. Let them see the working of your faith. Let them see the power of God working for you. That's your testimony. That's your door of witness to others. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Romans 4. Verse 16. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now our God, this is how he lives. Wow. This is how he lives. He said what? And what? Verse 17 again, as, as it is written, I made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God, who? Even God who quickeneth the dead, brings to life the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Are you calling things? Are you calling them, those things into existence? Hebrews oh, he, 11. <laughs> oh, hold your place right there. Uh, I just want to show you this because this is what you got to do. This, this is what God did. This is how he works. This is how he lives. This is how he calls us to live. So by faith. He says here in verse 3, Hebrews 11 and 3, through faith, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So we do the same thing. We frame our world by the word of God. What do you want to see happening? What do you want to see going on? Declare, put the word on it. Put the word of faith on it. Don't be like the children of Israel in the wilderness who complained and complained and complained their way out of the promised experience. Never saw it. God said, I'm raising up Caleb and Joshua. Out of 12, it was two who went in. Out of 12, he said, those two, they're going to see it. They're going into the land. They're going to experience it. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. Whew. So 
So I got to call those things to be not as though they were. Verse 18, who against hope believed in hope. It's going to look like there's opposition all around. It's going to always look like it's not happening. It's going to look like things are not coming to fruition yet. But we have the word of God. Who what? Against hope. What? Believed in hope. Great expectation. That word hope means expectation. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Verse 19, come on. And being not weak in faith, Romans 4, 19, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, what he had promised, what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Wow. In the name of Jesus. Can you give him praise this morning? What God promised. Do you believe that he's able to perform it? The business, the executive business, the building, do you believe God for it, that he's able to perform it? The school, do you believe God is able to perform it? See, faith is putting all the materials together. It's not waiting for the thing to come, now I'm going to get started. That's not faith. Faith is, Lord, I'm putting my business plan together. I'm putting all the materials together. I'm putting everything that in order or what needs to be in order for it. I'm working my faith. I'm preparing. Faith births a response of corresponding action, preparing for what God is going to unfold and bring forth. It's not waiting for something to happen to do something. That woman with the issue of blood, she could have just stood there and watched Jesus in the crown and said, well, I'm going to get my healing. I'm going to get my healing. I'm going to get mine in the name of Jesus. And she went in there and, and, and got it. Wow. Those four men brought that man in the palsy. They took him in to get it. I call that stubborn faith. That's stubborn faith. That's fully persuaded. They tore the roof off. They didn't care what they had to do, but they were going to get it. That's determination. That's how you got to be. But that's called great faith. But you can't get to great faith if you haven't gone beyond little faith. And the Bible talks about no faith, little faith, great faith. Abraham was strong in faith. That means he had grown up and established, grown up and established in the promise of God or what God has declared. He didn't even have a Bible. But he was strong in faith. How is that possible? He had the promise of God. He had stars to look at at night. And he had dust and dirt to look at during the daytime. Wow. That's what God promised him. He said, if you can number the ground, the dust of the ground, that's how the seed's going to be that's coming out of you. If you can number the stars, you can tell the stars, that's how the seed's going to be. Wow. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. Come on, stand on your feet. We thank you this morning. I want you right now, the very thing, it may be a person, it may be a family member, it may be an unsaved loved one. I want you right now to what you believe in God for, what you need to work your faith on and believe God for right now. We're going to release our faith. We're going to release our faith. In the name of Jesus, we speak that unsaved loved one into existence, into, into a born again believer serving God, living in divine alignment according to God's will. Oh my gosh. There's a young man right now who was saved 
has the calling of preaching and teaching the gospel on his life, Uns he, he, he backslidden, not living according to God's will. But we declare right now his salvation and his restoration back to God. We call them back. We call them back. Father, don't let them rest. We call them back. We call them back. Yielding all his heart, mind, and soul unto you now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. Come on, what you believe in God for? Right now, put the word of faith on it. Right now, in this moment. I want you to declare the word of God. What you believing God for in the name of Jesus and tell him God I release my faith I'm not just standing back watching and just wishing and hoping no no I am going to start working the plan I will minister to that family member I'll keep praying over them I'll keep calling them and praying over them. I'll keep minister I'll keep calling and ministering to them pouring the word on them I'll keep reminding them of the goodness of God. I'll keep reminding them of God's plan and purpose for their life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give some worship. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. I keep reminding them. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. You believe in for a house. Don't just go to one. Don't just go to two. Don't just go to, no, no. Keep going. And keep releasing your faith. No, no discouragement. You believe in for the business? Put the plan together. Work the plan. Start putting the materials together. Put your financials together. Put your, put your flow chart together. Put, your, put all of your demographics together. Put your PowerPoint presentation together. Look, when God told me to open the business, I didn't have a dime. God said, Put the plan together. I put the business plan together. Had it all laid. I had pictures, everything. I had had the operations book together. I had my menu together. I had the, every descriptor how to make every every product that we we're gonna sell. I had it all broken down. God said, "Now." That's what He said when He saw my faith. That's what he said. He said, now I want you to go to this person. Go to that. He specifically gave me names. Go to this person. Go to that person. Show them your PowerPoint please, and presentation. They're going to invest into your business. I didn't have a dime. I went from zero dollars to ten thousand dollars in a matter of a month and open the business with $10,000. After open the business, the city came, you got to put in a grease trap. This is not big enough for what you got there. Another $10,000 just for that. Thousand gallon grease traps. What? So I went, the building we was leasing, I told the guy, I said, we gotta get this grease trap out of here. 
we need a thousand gallon uh, grease trap in here. He said, I'm not doing nothing for you. I'm not doing nothing. You, you take care of that yourself. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, okay. He don't know who he messed with. <laughs> I sat down, prayed three days straight. Prayed, prayed for him. Prayed, prayed, prayed three days straight. The third day, I was in the restaurant. Here he come, out of the blue, walking in the door. All right, let's talk. Here's what we're going to do. I got to get one. See what happened? <laughs> they done went down there, investigated his business. Now he needed one. We ended up getting two for the price of one. Somebody said hallelujah. And God provided for that grease trap. Somebody said hallelujah. But it was by faith. It was by faith. And the same God that move then is the same God that will move now for you. In the name of Jesus. So no is not an option. Quitting is not an option. Not being done is not an option. We're going to pray until the fire of God gets on that loved one. They come running to Jesus. But you can't quit. You can't look a month later and two months later and say they're not saved yet. Oh, yes, Lord, I hear you. Oh, my God. Let me, let me tell you about my mother. And, and I was out on the street, ran away from home because I didn't want to listen. <laughs> Hard-headed. Went out there and was living with hoodlums and drug dealers. And my mom was praying for me, and my mom was praying for me, and she was praying for me, and she was praying for me. And I'm going to tell you, my mom was out praying, riding. She said, Lord, I don't know where my son is, but just, Lord, lead me the way he's at. And I was out on the street, on the street corner, bad neighborhood. And the Holy Spirit told my mom, turn right there. And she turned. And when she turned, she saw me down the street standing right there. And she ministered to me, got in the car, rode with her. She ministered to me, kept loving on me, kept helping me. I, I just was, was hard-headed, stubborn. <laughs> Went back out there. But she kept praying. And my grandma praying. And my mother praying. And my grandma praying. They prayed, prayed, prayed. Till that day came. It took me going to prison. Getting locked up. For my eyes to be open. But they were the first ones. When I gave my heart to Christ. My grandma preached to her and my aunt. In the living room. she passed away and that same year that same year I got saved that same year she passed away but before she died her prayers were answered come on somebody come on somebody her prayers were answered so we can't say God is not able to do it because he didn't do it when we thought he was going to do it. We got to keep trusting and believing him and knowing that God, I thank you. You said, God, whatsoever we pray and call and ask in your name, 
you will do it. I have a promise from God. I have a guarantee. And so, years later, that, I, my son don't mind me telling, I did the same thing for them. I prayed over them, and I prayed over them, and I prayed over them. And when sometimes it looked like they were going in the same course and route of what I used to be years ago and what I used to do, I kept praying over them and I would call their names out and I would declare what they will be and they will serve the Lord and live for God. And I would tell God, let not one of them be lost. But I didn't force Jesus down their throat. I kept ministering to them. I kept loving them. I've kept pouring out the truth on them. And the Lord saved their lives. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. But he did it in his own way. He did it. You see, and you got to let God do it in your life, for your family, his way. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So right now, we declare. The Father, we are walking in work in faith. In the name of Jesus, you can, you can shut that off. In the name of Jesus, we pray for those that are watching right now. We declare salvation. We declare healing. We declare restoration to your lives. You're not saved. We, we just confess this prayer right now. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sin. Save me today. I believe that God raised you, Jesus, from the dead just for me. Satan, I denounce you. You're not my God anymore. I'm serving Jesus now. I'm living for him in Jesus' name. Listen, get into a good Bible teaching church. That is teaching the word of God. Where you can grow and increase in the things of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.